Uh, hey everyone, this is Steve Weintraub and you are here at the Collider Studio at South by Southwest with the fine folks behind Bob Trevino Likes It. How are you guys doing? Well, doing great. great. How are you? I would imagine you, your film has premiered. It premiered yesterday. I would imagine you are having a great South by Southwest. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> no, because That's look, straight. No, I'm sure, I'm sure audiences have responded to this movie because I had a strong emotional reaction to this uh, thing. So listen, I hate starting with a generic thing like this, but most people watching this have not seen the movie. Mm -hmm. So how have you been describing it to friends and family? Um, it's, it's inspired by a true story. It's about uh, a time when my dad kind of disappeared and he was mad at me and I was trying to reach him and I, uh, I, put it, I put his name into Facebook trying to find him and you know, accidentally friended another man with his name who ended up being more kind and more fatherly to me than my dad ever was. So it's, it's a story about, uh, about that, about chosen family and how, uh, you know, People are out there that want to love you. So um, I'm curious. This is a little bit of a jokey question. I have to go this direction first. So um, how much have you physically prepared yourself for the amount of people that are going to walk up to you randomly on the street after they see this movie and just punch you in the face? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> The character inspired by my dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's already started. Uh, I think, you know, I think uh, somebody said, uh, well, I, I loved you, but I mean, I hate you, but uh, good job. That's why I'm getting kind of, it's a mixed thing a little bit. So, uh, you know, uh, but other narcissists are probably like, I, I don't see a problem with this guy. <laughs> Seems perfectly legit to me. <laughs> no, because I mean, I, no, because I, I, when I was watching it, I wanted to re. I, it, it rarely happens where I want to reach in and destroy a character, but I really wanted. I mean, to really punch you. I really, like, it, I really like, appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, but uh, there's still time. <laughs> right, still time. No, but it's. But anyway, so uh, great. Just it, it's great writing and great work. Thing. From, you know, when you guys are sharing scenes because uh, it really, you know, had such an emotional reaction. It's the, it's the hardest thing to do is to look at uh, Barbie, who I've just grown to absolutely adore and have to say things like that to her and then see her face be so malleable. And then you're just like, oh, God, I just I think I'm going to need another take because <laughs> I, 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 I can't talk to her like this right now. <laughs> No. Uh, I definitely want to, you are fantastic in the movie and you have to deliver, you are very emotional in many scenes. And as an actor, um, what is it like knowing that for a lot of this shoot, you are really need to be vulnerable and you need to be crying and it's a lot. So what is it like, you know, prepping for a role like this, knowing the physic, like the emotional stuff you're going to have to bring to the surface to deliver such a performance? Absolutely. I think for me, I have my own daddy issues and I think a lot of us here can relate. You know what I mean? So in a weird way, this project was actually so natural that I, I didn't even know I had that in me, really. I mean, sometimes I would go into set, I'm like, okay, I have like, you know, four scenes today, you know, we're indie, so we're, we're, we're cranking them out. And, you know, I have like all these different kind of, um, emotions to go through. And I, I swear every time I would even read the scene with, with them or alone, it just brought so many, so much emotions to me, even at the forefront, even like after and even after like five takes, it's, and I've never experienced that. I mean, you know, I'm human. I'm like, sometimes I'm like so frustrated myself. I'm like in my trailer. I'm like, why can't I get there? You know, but with this project specifically, for some reason, it unlocked something in my brain that really, um, helped me as an actor and having a great cast too just helps because it's like you get to feed off that energy and I was trying to be as present as possible bring my own emotions which I didn't even know I had really a lot of them a lot of them were like resurfaced uh, when me and Tracy were having conversations and even during the scene right um you know like there's a scene where I didn't really expect to be that emotional and it just over it just overcame me and I was like okay I, you know I kind of gotta get it together because you know there, it, this is not how it's supposed to go but it ended up you know working but um, yeah, it was weird. What was that? The puppy scene. Really? Yeah. Oh my god. I, so I didn't powerful. expect that at all. And it's I just amazing. it was it, it was such a uh, amazing experience as an actor, and especially like I I've only done a few things, and um, you know I'm always trying to unlock something, always trying new things still to see what works, and with this 
it just so naturally fell into place. And every single beat that I was emotional with, it wasn't like I was thinking like, oh, I gotta be emotional. You know, it's just, it would just come over me. And I, I mean, I, I haven't experienced that so easily in any other project. And I think because the subject matter is so close to home for me, for Tracy, for everyone and the crew, you know, everyone in the cast, we all have our reasons why we're there. Um, and our own kind of uh, ideas of uh, and, and traumas and childhood. So it just, and it, it was just felt like everyone was in it. And every time we would read it, everyone was feeling those emotions through Tracy's writing. So good writing helps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, Bad oh. writing does not help. Yeah. Right. But what yeah, I, make it work. What I, what I just learned is before this movie, Barbie didn't like puppies. <laughs> And so I that have, scene I have a dog. Crept, okay. crept up on Do her. Do not listen to him. <laughs> we're starting beef. We, we decided we're going to start beef today. Yeah. I was like, John, I was like, we should just not be in the same room together yeah, today. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I think we should start something spicy just for fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, now it's French. <laughs> you asked for it. I did. I got it. I, what is it like for you? Because you've, you've played all sorts of characters, but, the, but your character in this is quiet, reserved, but has something emotionally going on under the surface that he's been dealing with with his wife um, and just talk a little bit about your character and what I guess what you drew you to this role uh, well I, obviously I love independent films is my favorite genre of filmmaking because it's always you know about character it's character driven it's 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 a storyteller's medium uh, Tracy's an auteur you know she wrote it and directed it and so it's always going to have a handcrafted aspect to it, so you you can really be yourself. And and this is a chance for me to be myself because I'm usually a little bit, um, you know, sometimes evil, sometimes gangstery, or sometimes too clownish. Whatever you know, whatever it, it is that I'm becoming, I become. It's it's not usually me. So this was a chance for me to be like like I well I, I that I think I am. I may not be that that good of uh, good of a dad, but I think I I try anyway. And I feel like my character is really trying to be a great dad. He's and and he's trying to make it up with Lily because he never had a the child that his child. Um, I don't know if I don't want to give it away, okay. but he had a, a situation happen that that was really traumatic for him and, and and made him get locked in his emotions, and sort of uh, not want to reach out and have friends. Not he he became a, a shut in basically with his wife, and so. Tracy and I had to really craft it carefully to make sure that when he's befriending Lily, it doesn't, you know, make sure that people understand that uh, men can have platonic relationships. They can be father figures and it doesn't have to be a, a sexualized. That's, that's the other thing is that oftentimes with movies, like, listen, I, all of us, we watch a lot of movies and generally the relationship that would be depicted would be going in an evil direction right. or there'd be something nefarious or something going on below the surface but it's a genuine relationship right. where they each care about each other which is you know um I, I made a statement i don't know where i was going with that but i, I want to ask that men can do men can do that right tracy that that just Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we've all had, you know, experiences where, we, oh, I thought you were my friend. Oh, this is what you, you're, you were, was really about or, you know, and, and to, to not go there, you know, or to, to say, hey, this, there's a beautiful young woman that I see. I'm not looking at her. I see her. I see her. I see her heart. I see, you know, her pain and I want to be her friend, you know, and there's so much healing in that. I think we live in a, in, in a, in a society right now that's like looking at people and not seeing them, you know, and, and I think that we can have a lot more friendships, you know, so. Uh, you're a poet. You're a poet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, you finish the movie. You have a, you have a cut that you're happy with. Uh, who do you who when you showed it to gave you the best? I'm butchering the way I'm trying to say this. Who gave you the best notes after seeing the movie that made you see the film in a new way? That made you be like, oh wait, I need to adjust something. Um, well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big fan of test screenings. You know, I, I mean, luckily, you know, with an indie, it wasn't someone telling me I had to do it or I had to do it a certain way. But that was we were creating the test screenings and and bringing people we trust. And so there were there. I, I can't say exactly what it, but there are a few notes that we got from the test screenings that um, from people we trust. And, and I made the changes, and I was like, ah, oh. there were a lot of notes that were like really different. You know, <laughs> like hey, that's not this movie. Um, but um, so I think you know those were I I 
My, also, by the way, oh, I can't say this because it says the plot. Sorry, I'm, I can't tell you. <laughs> I know what you're gonna say. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. one day you will. Know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but not right now. But not right yeah, now. Not right now is the time. Watch the movie, <laughs> and then we'll talk. <laughs> when did you? Uh, when did you realize that it was working? Was 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 the first time you showed it to like a really big group? Was it South by, or did you do any bigger screenings where you're like? you know this is all working. We, we did do a, a bigger test screening at, at downtown LA, you know, in downtown LA, invited about 50 people. And um, that was the biggest group we'd had, normally been much smaller. And you could feel the hearts like cracking open in the movie. And, like you could feel, I was like, this is palpable. You can feel there's 50 people in here and the room just changed. And you know, when the movie ended, everybody was just quiet. And I was like, did, did they like it or, or, you know? And then they all stood up. Everybody stood up in the wow. room at a test screening, you know? And it wasn't wow. even the final cut, you know? So, um, yeah yeah and I and that was that I was like okay we're not there yet because it wasn't final you know and there's definitely still notes but but we are affecting people and we are doing something very special which I knew on set but you know when, when you put it together you know you have to see it so yeah um what is it like as a filmmaker because I got emotional watching this uh what is it like as a filmmaker being in a big sold out theater and having an entire audience like you can feel that emotion and you can tell that you've touched so many people i can't imagine what it's like as an artist and this goes for everyone i mean it it was uh it was just magical i mean it it just i felt like everybody was with it from the beginning and i i, I, I you do a lot of movies and every movie you do they'll tell you, you know, that, well, the dailies look great. But I've, but, I've, but, I've, but I've been in a lot of crappy movies. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you know, go together. But. Yeah, they're like, uh, Beverly Hills Chihuahua 2. It's going to put you over the edge, my friend. But like Would this, this, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that one's actually pretty good. <laughs> no, anyway, no, but I, I think that for this, I, I, I felt it early on because we, we came in to, uh, uh, I mean, Tracy graciously gave us rehearsal. Uh, we had a full day practiced and I sat down with Barbie and the first time we read it, I thought, oh, this is, this is going. And then Tracy whispered to Barbie, Tracy whispered to me, and then we did it again and it was like, oh, it's really going. And I just kept thinking, let's not mess with it. And then Tra Tracy said, let's not mess with it. Let's, let, let's move on. And so, you know, last night was just sort of this uh, uh, reaffirmation of what you were feeling, that, that your instincts are, are, are on for this one. You know, it was lovely. So when you see the shooting schedule, uh, what is the day you have circled in terms of, I can't wait to film something or I can't wait to film this? And what day did you have circled in terms of, oh, this is gonna be a really tough day or how are we gonna film this? I would say for me, the rage room was definitely fun. <laughs> I was like, I, I need some anger. I, I have some anger and I'd like to, to get it out. I thought that was really um, exciting to do. Um, and for the, the tough days, I don't even know if there was any tough days. Maybe in, just in just because of the heat, because it's Kentucky. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That probably was the only thing that made it kind of yeah. hard sometimes. <laughs> so when we're shooting outside and it's like the middle of the day and it's hot, that probably I was like, okay, we're gonna get through this. We're gonna make it. I'm a sweater. I like to sweat. Um, so you know, and the, in the movie, I, I, I'm fairly sweaty, and it add, and it adds to you adds know to the, the Kentucky summer. <laughs> but yeah, sometimes a little bit too much. But um, yeah, the rage room was super fun. And then whenever it was like super duper hot, I was like, okay. We're gonna bring a bunch of fans. I have all these like handheld fans, and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and I did. I always had my fan on my face, so that was pretty much. It wasn't a circle of a day because you don't know, but I was like, when it's hot and humid that might be a little bit tougher for me. <laughs> We're on the exact same page about heat exactly. and humidity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like it cold. It's interesting you said circle, because I do circle like the days that I, I feel like gonna be a little more difficult for me. So I had a couple circled because I had the, 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 the diner room, dining, uh, the, monologue? the monologue about the yes. kid. So I had to like really prepare for that. And so I, I, I definitely circle it going, I need to hit these beats and and be there present so i had to like you know you meditate and you prepare for it absolutely uh every day every day i was like <laughs> i look at the, the schedule and I'm like oh wow how are we going to do this because it was packed you know i mean uh, we're an indie and and you know we had a lot of locate people were like can you cut down the locations and i didn't do it and uh i mean i did a little but we had like 20 locations or something which is crazy for a little movie you know but um 18 days yeah yeah at the end of the day we had 18 days you know so so um and a lot but if i if i hadn't had this cast there's no way i could have done it because they just nailed it, you know? And it, yeah, and I, we were all prepared, you mm -hmm. know? We had we had 
built our the histories yeah. we had you know we had trust you know and so uh luckily we, we made it <laughs> my days were shockingly similar you know uh <laughs> wake up have coffee be, be mean to barbie right <laughs> take four days off come back <laughs> have coffee be mean to barbie <laughs> <laughs> french would make me crack up sometimes when he was making like you like, there's a lot of things that we cut and he would improv some really amazing just like dad like um uh insults and <laughs> and i was trying so hard not to laugh because it was like he's so funny and there was and also there was a scene you know where the, the, in, in uh oh, i won't say too much of it but it was like the restaurant scene and it was just so we kept it every time it was just so different i'm like trying so hard not to like be <laughs> <laughs> to be offended that my father is saying that instead of dying laughing that French has made up the most funny thing I've ever heard in my life. Your face would be, it was so funny because you, you just kept it together. But it, like, at one point I said, uh, you look like an unmade bed. I still <laughs> say that. <laughs> I literally, I told French, I'm like, I, I have I have adopted that into my vocabulary. It, it was it was really hard to cut those all that out. Yeah, you know, like the, I was like this, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because it, there was so much gold, you know. So for everyone who's coming in, we're doing a supercut of all my in all the interviews that I'm doing this is the curveball of the uh, the interview uh, if you could only watch one TV show for the rest of your life what TV show would you pick and why oh, wow. mm. I was gonna say curb your enthusiasm cuz it's I could just watch it so often um, and it's like you know when it's like a, a drama, I would I love it, but I don't want to keep watching it. You know, I, I got I I figured it out. <laughs> you know, with the curb, it's like you can just keep watching it over and over again. Um, and you know, recently, actually, I've been <laughs> this is actually a really funny one. I've been watching That's So Raven a lot with my friends. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> and the nostalgic, I've been yeah, really yeah, into yeah. nostalgic stuff. So I've been watching That's So Raven a lot with my friends. So yes, those two, Curb Your Enthusiasm and That's So Raven. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, uh, off the top of my head, I, I think Breaking Bad. I just love the hell out yeah. of that. Vince Gillian oh. and and Brian Cranston. I mean, they just, I, I don't know, that that show was so unbelievably, wonderfully made. I have two, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, Pen15, I'm a big, big fan oh. of Pen15. Uh, just, yeah, it's... The, it's my childhood, basically. You know the absurdity of the awkwardness of, of coming of age. You know, um, and uh, and and better things. Just because oh. I just yeah. And we met Pam Adlon. Yeah, yeah we met Pam Adlon the other night. So. If I'm being honest, it's going to be Dateline. <laughs> I, I want to see like I want to see Keith Morrison come in and say. Two young lovers went on a cruise. Only one returned. I, love your <laughs> I could watch that. My wife got me hooked on crimes. It, 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 same. Yeah, I, she, I love crime. She I love. I love forensic I watch a lot of Yeah. yeah. About it. Also, Arma mentioned the com the comeback. I totally forgot. I oh, yeah. watch that so often. Oh yeah. The comeback is probably one of the the best shows ever created. And a ten year gap, perfect. Oh, also hacks. I could watch it. Now there could be a thousand. I, I keep going. Oh, no, 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 a thousand things. Hurry up, Dan Pesser, and the comeback. Yeah, yeah. I will say that everyone from Hacks was in here yesterday, uh, and I also love that show and yeah. cannot wait to see the new season. So, um, so I am not a huge fan of social media. I think that it, it is poison for you. I don't want to say too much, but I'm not, I'm not the, uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I have some issues with social media, yeah. right? Go but, into detail. Yeah, but <laughs> I will say this is one of the rare times where Facebook is used for good. Yeah. So oh, yeah. I, I am, all oh, right, right, yeah. right, right. So I am curious when you are using Facebook in a movie like this, um, do you need permission or do you get to just, because it's like a, you know what I mean? Like, how does that actually work? Well, um, I, you know, we talked to some people beforehand and, and you know, um, we are, I think two of the rules of fair use is that you're using it in its intended context and that you're not defaming, you know, uh, whatever. And, and we're not, we're actually like, this is, this is a, yeah, this is a positive <laughs> movie about Facebook, you know? Know. That's and, what I mean. and yeah, yeah, exactly. Like... And it's, it's a rare, uh, positive movie about social media and about the power, the, the, you know, the positive potential and power of, of the, these types of connections, you know? Yeah. So. I, I really wish more social media was used like what's, depicted in this movie yeah. Yeah. you know what i mean yeah. um so did you end up with a lot of deleted scenes or is it because you only had 18 days i actually yeah there were there were four uh scenes that didn't make the really movie. yeah yeah there were shorter scenes but and it was crazy because i was like wow as packed as we were we could have used that time you know yeah. like to, <laughs> but um but the, they were more um kind of like 
transitionary scenes, you know, when, oh, it, when it's kind of like, I was like, oh, I can drop in later. I, I don't need that, you know, set up or, you know. Before I run out of time, because I'm about to, I, I need to let you guys go to your next speed dating <laughs> round. Um, I, as we spoke off camera, I am a, a fan of Brad Furman's work. And yeah, yeah. You, so what can you tease about Tin Soldiers and <laughs> what fans can expect of his from his work? Wow. I mean, I, I feel like Brad since City of Lies is now going to a whole other level. I mean, I think this might, this is his biggest budget, most ambitious movie. He's trying to combine psychological thriller with an action film. So it's a really powerful film inspired by Tarkovsky, which I introduced Brad to. <laughs> so I feel pr proud to be Brad's mentor that way. And and you got you got Jamie Foxx, you got De Niro, you got Scott Eastwood. I mean, it's it's a it's a power powerhouse cast. It's gonna be wild. I have an individual question for you, if you don't mind. Of course. I am so curious about Faces of Death yes. and House of Spoils. Yes. So um, both are horror. Yes. And so, what is it like? Do you get to scream in these movies? What can you tease about both of uh, both roles? Um, I would say, so House of Spoils, um, we shot about like almost two years ago and I actually haven't seen much of it, so I don't really know. Um, but that one I think is more of like a psychological thriller, um, and just was really fun to work with Ariana DeBose and Ariane Moya. I, I love them. They're, it was so fun. We're in Hungary for like two months. It was, you know, super cool. Um, Faces, we just finished our pickups and... You know, uh, it's looking pretty fun. It's it's actually, it's looking really good. It's spooky, it's scary. And my family hates horror movies, but I will be forcing everyone to watch it. But it's very scary and, you know, just, and it's, it's, it's such a fun watch and gruesome and scary and just so fun to, to be the person, uh, uh, you know, scream queen kind of vibe. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the thing about it, like the original, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the original Faces of Death, but like that was the legendary thing where, you know, this is all real, oh, blah, right, blah, right. blah. Um, so like, w if you don't mind, like what's this version? Is it a, is it, you know what I mean? Like, what is it yeah. about? So it's a, obviously we're not, you know, Faces of Death is like a gore tape, you know, with sure. Mondo films and, you know, um, actually a lot of it was fake, but they kind of, it was during the time where everyone kind of wanted it to look like it was real and then they were going to like trials to like prove its special effects and stuff. So it was like of that era. Um, so this movie uh, is, Faces of Death exists in the universe, but we're not obviously recreating it frame to frame because that would just be like <laughs> animal gore, which <laughs> no one wants to see that. But it's, um, it's, it's a contemporary take on it. It's, uh, I play a young woman who is a content moderator and I um, start seeing some uh, videos that are alarming and then the story goes on and Faces of Death is, I've seen it many times now in the movie and on YouTube because you can randomly watch it on YouTube um, and yeah, it's going to be really fun. I think it's it's a, it's an interesting way to go about it because we're not it's not a remake per se but it is a reimagining of it sure. in the in the universe and it's um, it's super scary and it's very, uh, it's a, it's a cool, fresh take on kind of horror movies right now. And, um, just a fun, I, I love, I love a fun movie too. It's scary as hell though. I appreciate you, uh, letting me know. And I really want to say this to all of you guys. You did really great work with this. I don't appreciate you making me cry, um, <laughs> at all. Uh, but it's a sign of how, you know, how you, how I and the, audiences that are going to see this care about these characters so congrats and congrats Thank to you. all of you and Thank get ready you. for people to punch you um, <laughs> so on that note have a fantastic south by Thank and you. avoid people that have Thank seen you. the movie you need a security guard yeah. now yeah. 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 Yeah.